for the coffee and correct hyphen grammar. A live stream in which I will answer your grammar questions if you have any. If I'm if I can answer them here in this venue. I'm using my phone to do the live stream and I'm also looking at the computer, looking at comments and looking things up and things like that. One thing I wanted to address that doesn't really have to do with the grammar, but it has to do with something personal to me, is that when you put yourself out there in the public, like I do, on a pretty regular basis, if you put your face and your correct name and you're up for scrutiny for the whole earth to scrutinize the public, um, it creates a very unusual and weird situation, really. And although I'm not, def I'm definitely not comparing myself to, to like famous people or anything like that. However, I do have a cognition of what a small, like fraction, a fraction of a fraction of what those people must go through to be under public scrutiny. Because if, if you follow my community center here, you'll see that I've begun to attract trolls in one form or another. People who will come and just comment things just to create a reaction. And I block those things pretty much right away as soon as I can uh, to keep that out of this construct. However, it's just very strange when you get people contacting like I get people contacting me people that I may that I thought were friends or may appear to be friends and then they will make critiques about for example my personal appearance or the way they think I act or the way I think I am as compared to the way I used to be or with comparison to someone else it's very strange to have those types of things happen and when they start happening it's only just recently started happening after I broke 3,500 subscribers. So I guess the only way I can say that anyone else would know what I'm talking about is if they themselves did what I do. If they themselves put themselves up for scrutiny and their knowledge up for scrutiny to the public on a pretty regular basis and invite in grammar questions and things like that live on the spot. Um, only then will you know what it is I'm talking about. But I just wanted to share that. It's just very strange. And I find that just maintaining those principles that I set for myself that uh, makes it a little easier to navigate. Just never take anything personal and just move forward. Because there's always going to be those people, unfortunately, who see what, what I do in a negative light. They don't like it for some reason. Um, for whatever reason, maybe it conflicts with some sort of uh, belief that they hold. And, uh, and again, you know, the grammar is about 90% psychological. So if you're stuck in a belief, like if you are stuck in maybe believing what that someone who passed away, um, believing that they cannot be wrong, then you're going to be stuck in that situation, and that's unfortunate. But there's room for everybody. I have no quarrel with anyone. Um, I'm teaching those who wish to learn. And, the, oh, that's another thing. And I have had students that have reached a certain point where they, and this happens quite frequently, actually. A lot of people reach a certain point where there, there's something that they just will not accept or cannot accept as far as grammar mechanics, whether it has to do with something that conflicts with uh, what the founders of the grammar said or something that I created that the founders of the grammar didn't create. And so they think that, well, that can't be correct because they didn't say it things like that and then it stops their learning and they won't learn anymore they refuse that's fine too there's room for everybody everybody can do this the proof is in the pudding if you want to do this and you want to make it a part of your life and have a positive impact then performances must be in place start performing start using it if you think you know how to use it um, get experience with it 
That's the only thing I can say. I mean, you can read books all you want to about how to swim. Read all the textbooks. Have a whole library of textbooks on how to swim. And the, the mathematical interface on swimming. And you, you think you know it because you've done math for however many years. And, but until you jump in that water, you can't really say that you know what you're doing. You got to be able to do it on the spot. I found that out very quick a couple years ago when I started doing it. The best way to learn is to do it. And I highly recommend it to those out there who truly want to get closure on this and want to do something with it. I found that the best way to positively impact others' lives with it is to do stuff yourself. And that's what I'm trying to do with this grammar. Okay, now on to the next thing. Let's see, do we have any comments yet? Absolutely not. Okay. So recently I posted um, in my community section. Actually, I posted it today for the closure of the letter capitalization. And this has to do with this repeated thing that comes up where I will get people who watch the Glossa channel or the Justinian De Deception, which are great channels, by the way, love them. Lots of information there for people who want to learn about the fiction and how that works. Um, but they'll come from that camp, so to speak. And, and they'll say, why are you using capital, all capital letters? It's pig Latin, it's dog Latin, it's Glossa. Why are you using it? And then I always ask the question, well, where do you, where's your closure come from on that? Where did you get the closure on that? Where did you get the idea that all caps is pig Latin or dog Latin or Glossa? And then they'll say, well, if you go into a styles manual, oh, what kind of styles manual? Is it a fiction styles manual? So you're telling me you're giving jurisdiction of your grammar to the fiction? I mean, that's your choice. I don't do that. I am the authority of my grammar. And in this recent post on my community section, I give closure, incorrect sentence structure, as to why I use all caps when I choose to. I don't do it all the time, but most times I do. And I'll read that out loud right now. For the zero A period. For this claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the volition claim of the oity, with the capitalization of the letters, with the clarity of the viewership, with the ease of the document construction, with this correct sentence structure closure by this claimant and author, Jason Matthew Glass. Now, what I'm saying there, the cause of that is my knowledge. And what's the knowledge concerned with? The facts. We've drawn our two points. Our straight line, because you need two points to draw a straight line, that is the geometric level playing field of communication. Now we can put our verb of the thinking in safely. We've positioned it with correctness. Next comes the possessive with this volition claim. So it's a claim of volition. What is it possessing? It's possessing the facts. What's it concerned with? Of the oite. Oite is a word that I salvaged because the word U-S-E or U-S-U-R-Y, usury and use and usage, those are no contract because it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word. So I did away with that in my construct. I salvaged O-E-T-I, which is two vowels in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. And now it's positive performance. So oite basically means use. What's possessing the oite with the capitalization? What's the capitalization concerned with? The letters. What's possessing the letters? The clarity that I'm providing. And what's the clarity concerned with? The viewership, meaning I want to clarify the letters for the viewers. Why I'm writing in all caps. What's possessing the viewership? The ease. What is the ease concerned with? The document construction. Quite simply, when you're writing a very long, correct sentence structure document, pages and pages, it's much easier to just write in all caps. And it provides a clarity uh, for the letters because a capital I is not going to be confused with a lowercase L and so on and so forth. So it's for the 
clarity of the viewership with the ease of the document construction. What's possessing the document construction? Correct sentence structure, closure. And what is the authority of that closure? Me, the author, the authority, the claimant. Simple, right? So then let's move on to for the zero B period. For this claimant's knowledge, which is the cause, concerned with the facts of the facts is with this volition claim of the oite with the letter combination of the capitalization and of the lowercase with the specification of the live creature's names or of the live life claimant's names with this correct sentence structure closure by this claimant and author, Jason Matthew Glass. So what that's saying is we got our cause, which is the knowledge. That's where the claim comes from. Concerned with the facts, we got our two Position lodial fact phrases. Now we can put our verb of the thinking is singular is because claimant's knowledge is singular. Possession, volition claim. What's volition claim possessing? The facts. It's a volition claim of the facts. What's it concerned with? The use, the oite. What's possessing the oite? The letter combination, the combination of letters, how you write them out. What's the letter combination concerned with? The capitalization uppercase, all caps, and the lowercase, lowercase letter, letters. So we're talking about combining uppercase and lowercase letters in the same word. What's possessing that? The specification, I'm specifying something. What's the specification concerned with? Oh, the live life, or the live creature's names or the live life claimant's names. So if I'm writing out a live life, cre live life claimant's name or a live creature's name, I'm going to use upper and lowercase. I'm not going to use all caps. I'm clarifying this in this sentence. That's why I write my name in upper and lowercase because I'm a live life claimant. If I were to write, uh, for example, my, my home companion, a, a little pit bull mix, her name is uh, Katie Bug. I would write colon, uppercase K, lowercase A, T, I, E, colon, space, capital B, lowercase U, G, period. Upper and lowercase, because she's a live creature. This is giving closure to that. With this correct sentence structure, closure, as I just said, by this claimant and author. And, uh, and then the last sentence uh, for the one period, for this claimant, the gratitude is with the aid of the raven, Farhad, Tohidi Afarin with the construction of the zero B with this statement by this claimant and author, Jason Matthew Glass. And that's just giving gratitude to my friend and brother, uh, Raven, because I originally had letter hyphen mix and he quite efficiently said, suggested, how about letter combination? Which is much better. And thank you for that, brother. Appreciate it. So hopefully this video will get out there and those Justinian deception slash Glossa channel slash Freeman sovereign uh, crowd will um, cease to spam the comment sections of my videos and things like that saying, why are you using all caps? Well, I just freaking told you. And I am being just a little bit cheeky here with that. So that's my main purpose for coming on here. Wow, things are kind of quiet in the chat. Interesting. Okay, no grammar questions, that's cool. I'll uh, wait a couple more minutes and then wrap it up. I appreciate your viewership. Also, uh, because I really haven't had the now space to create quality learning videos using this dry erase board of late, I've been pretty busy. Um, I've been creating podcasts and I've been creating grammar podcasts, not just opinion podcasts, but like opinions of, with, that have grammar knowledge in them. You might want to check that out on Anchor. I'll leave a link to, the, to that in the description of the video. The podcast usually runs 20 to minutes to a half an hour. 
and I'll pick a grammar topic and, and discuss it over there. You might want to check that out. It also has some good psychological um, stuff over there. Jason XR4 says, for this claimant sensation of the authority is with this claimant by this claimant. It is so because I said so. For this claimant, of this claimant, is with the authority by this claimant sensation. Well, the last two lines. Okay, first of all, if you're asking me to audit that, I will do so. You have for this claimant sensation. First of all, I don't see a hyphen in claimants. Yet the lodial is this, which it means it's specifying a singular fact. This would be singular. These would be plural. So you're saying this. And so you're saying claimants. So there's no apostrophe in there. Normally you would put in, if you want to use claimants, T apostrophe S as a possessive, you would put the apostrophe between the T and the S. That way the claimant is now possessing the sensation. And then your concern, what's the claimant sensation concerned with? The authority, okay? That's what you're saying. Now we go into the verb of the thinking, singular is, and in the possessive you have with this claimant and then by this claimant. So in order for it, I think to make more sense, I would suggest as a tutor, since you've come on to this comment section uh, where we have a contract uh, student tutor, um, you could just swap out one of those claimants with the word claim. So you could say for this claimant sensation of the authority is with this claim by the claimant, which would basically say, um, I have authority because I say so. That's what you're basically saying there. Um, it's a very short sentence. I mean, I would probably add some more things in there if it were me. Um, I do have, you know what? I'm going to go find it right now. I do have a claim of authority that I've written out. I just have to find it real quick here. And then I'll put it out there and you can check it out and see what you think. I think it's on my Weebly site in the blog section. Uh, it was also put in other places. Okay, here it is, claim of the authority. Let me copy this. Oh, there's actually more than that, but I'm just going to copy a couple of them. You know what? Instead of doing that, I'm just going to put the link to it in the comments section. That way you can read it yourself. There you go. Check that out, Jason. And while I'm at it, I'm going to jump into my dictionary and actually share with you my finite meaning from my co-dictionary of authority. Let me find it for you. Should come right up. No problem. Yep. Here we go. Okay. Thank you, Jason, for those kind words. I appreciate it.
Okay, I'm going to share with you um, the finite mean from my dictionary. And here you go. Tam Lerner says, this topic interests me very much. My instinct is toward writing perfection. I choose to learn perfect writ. Well, it's an admirable goal to be perfect. However, I'm not sure I've ever witnessed such a condition of state. Daniel, you're very welcome. I appreciate it. I wish I could screen share on this thing. We make things a lot easier. These these uh, podcasts or these uh, live streams a lot easier. But it is what it is. Also, um, I'm going to be releasing real quick here, sort of a part two to for the quantum grammar shoot thirty nine, having to do with the cause <clears throat> of a claim, where the source of a correct sentence structure claim comes from. And uh, there's a pretty cool question in it that I'm real curious to see if people will try and answer it. I don't want to give it away here. Uh, you have to listen to it. It's a pretty neat question. And it came up spontaneously. I didn't even know I was going to talk about it until it came up. Uh, it had to do with um, some contract writing that I was doing with a client. Uh, a year or two back and it was pretty pretty neat so you have to check that out for the quantum grammar shoot number 40 soon to be released maybe tonight maybe tomorrow all right coming up on 24 minutes anybody has any more grammar questions be happy to answer them anybody has any grammar they'd like to share their own correct sentence structure grammars. I'd love to see it. Happy to help. <clears throat> I hope everybody's staying healthy out there in this uh, new, new condition of state in the world that we have these days. I think it's more important than ever to uh, be able to be a steward of your grammar um, rather than having the grammar control you. Everyone is, can be their own authority if they choose to. Everyone can be autonomous and be a steward of their own contracts rather than be controlled by their agreements or always having to look over your shoulder. Am I, am I allowed to do that? Am I allowed to do this? I don't personally like that lifestyle. I like to uh, do the things that I want to do without someone telling me, no, you can't do that <laughs> because I don't agree with it. I mean, if it's hurting someone, that's one thing because I'm not here to hurt anybody. But if it's no harm, then... Where do we reply with the answers to the podcast? Um, I do give my email address in that podcast that hasn't come yet. So the email address will be available in the description of the podcast. It'll be in the podcast itself. And you can find my email address literally plastered all over this channel in the description of the videos, in the about section, in the community section, in the videos themselves. JasonMatthewG17 at gmail.com. Any grammar questions you have, feel free to reach out to me and I'll answer them the best I can. Why not hyphenate between the capital words? Trump Pet, what is your closure on a hyphen and what its function is? Let's Let's go there first. Let's get closure on what a hyphen is and what it does in correct sentence structure. 
because it does serve a specific function. Incorrect sentence structure. At least in my correct sentence structure, it has a very specific function. And as far as I can tell, it's a common thing across the board that most 99.9% .9 of all people that use this will agree that that's what the hyphen is used for. What is your closure on it? Yes, but you have honor, others don't. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate those kind words, but I'm still not clear on what, what you're asking. Hyphen is compound fact. Same day banners. Hey, I know who that is. What's up, brother? <laughs> um, <clears throat> That is correct, same day banners. A hyphen in between facts forms a compound fact. That's what it does. So if you take the, the word correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, and you hyphenate it, now that is one fact. You've taken all those facts and combined them to make a compound fact. That is what a compound fact is. And that is the function of the hyphen. So Trumpet says, why not hyphenate between capital words? Well, because if you... Now, since you, you haven't answered me, so I'm just going to have to guess what you're saying. Um, I think you mean, like I see some people do, they will write out a sentence, how are you doing today? And they'll put a colon and put how hyphen are hyphen you hyphen doing hyphen today. Right? Is that what you're talking about? That's a whole compound fact. To me, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you want to use that as a compound fact, but you would have to give individual finite means for how are you doing today? How are you doing today? Those five words. And you would also have to give closure to the entire thing because you've made it a compound fact. I myself like to try to keep my compound facts to about one hyphen, maybe two, and that's it. I like to keep them short. Basically, I don't want to hyphenate a fiction babble sentence and call it correct sentence structure. I prefer to have my correct sentence structure as pure as I can get it. I had a judge Tell me I have to sign his order, your order, you sign it. Sorry, off subject. It's because I'm still dealing with the fiction. Well, Trumpet, I'm pretty sure everybody here is dealing with the fiction. I can't think of one person, one man or woman who isn't dealing with fiction. Fiction's the system we have. Are hyphens also considered continuance of the evidence? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by that same day banners, Houston. Hyphens are a part of the continuance of the evidence. It's not a break in the continuance of the evidence, if that's what you mean, depending upon how it's used. Spacing must be a consideration. If you have a compound fact like Jason hyphen Matthew, but you put a space between the hyphen and the Matthew, now that screwed the whole thing up, that extra space there. Because now the hyphen is not functioning as a hyphen anymore. It's not connecting anything except for Jason and space. So you got to be careful with your uh, spacing there, if that's what you're talking about. <clears throat> All right, this one turned out pretty good, 30 minutes. That's about all the time I got for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me, appreciate it. And uh, as soon as this gets processed, I'll put it back up. Usually what I do is I'll post it in my community section, I'll leave it public for a while, and then I make it unlisted uh, so that um, anybody who has the link can view it but it's not public. It's still available to those who have the link and you can share the link, 
It's just not readily available, if that makes sense. I personally don't see a day when the fiction system won't be here. The great thing about quantum grammar is it's a tool that can enable someone to be a steward of their contracts rather than be controlled by their contracts. And it ain't easy. It's definitely not easy. Um, and, you know, not everyone's cut out for it. And I think the fiction system knows this, and that's why I don't think the fiction system is worried one bit about it. Because it takes such an enormous amount of energy and resources and now space to study this and get closure on it. And it takes an enormous amount of humility as well to be able to uh, let go of the cognitive dissonance that comes with what I would call a past tense trust account. And rather engage in a now space trust account. All right. Same day banners, Houston. Thank you, brother. We'll talk soon. And thanks everybody else for joining me. I appreciate it. And look for, for the Quantum Gram Grammar Shoot 40. I think you'll enjoy it. Peace.